Hello everybody and welcome back to day four of out running forest fires and chasing down fish. Today we hit the boat, we got the T-Rex, we got my best buddy Kale the salad, we got his brother up there, Doc Holiday himself, we got Sean the man himself, and we got Little, we got our 360 trolling rods, and we got all the persistence in the world. We're gonna dump them in, it is an absolute zoo out here of people, but the bite has been on fire. So, we're gonna get to fishing. I hope today's gonna be awesome. Be sure if you guys haven't already, drop a comment below, drop that thumbs up. Let us know if you think we're gonna catch any fish today. I think it's gonna happen. It's looking fishy. Let's do it. Not the biggest salmon in the sea, but beggars won't be choosers today. Broke one off already, so happy to have this one on the boat. We accomplished it. We caught a fish every day of this trip. It was so awesome. Day ain't over yet. It seems like the bite's just kind of starting here. Fish on. Fish on, fish on. Can you read this? Hey. Hey. Thank you. How quick it came on. Color. It's a big fish. Really big fish. Yeah. It's way downstream of you. <laughs> there we go. We got little. Look at that freaking hand, dude. Nice. Got it. Oh, that's a good fish, brother. That's a nice fish, everybody. Woo. What do you think, Little? Hell yeah. Thanks well for, done, brother. Thanks for the help. Oh, sweet. In hand and everything. Yeah. We basically just dropped it. Uh -huh. We didn't go a couple hundred yards. That was super exciting. Thank you, man. A little help from our friends, huh? Yeah. Well done, brother. Got him. <laughs> Slightly bring it in. All right. All right. Sean's on. Sean's rod got pounded on the drop again. Just turned around. We got a little tangled going here, but two lions are always better than one. Papa always said. Total mayhem out here, everybody. We got Who one. knows what's going on? We got a big one. Cameraman's right, got one. In. Okay. Okay, it's ready. Oh. Nice job, nice job, boys. Keep on, keep on. Oh, what a tangled mess, but that was absolutely awesome. Well done, Sean. This is what, this is the last thing that poor spinner saw before this mean salmon just demolished it. Good job, Sean. Camera guy got his meat for the day. We got bead. We got bead. Ready? Yep. Oh, baby. <laughs> 
Again, not the biggest one out here, but an absolute beauty, fresh out of the ocean. It's gonna taste really good. We got a special recipe for you guys today, so do not miss it, stick around. We're gonna get back, get these fish bled, get them filleted out, load the boat up. We're walking down victory lane, boys. Eee, we did it! We did yeah. it! Nice. <laughs> All right, so we're back at you here in the actual Kandigi's kitchen this time. Really, you know, we talk a lot, and when I was flaying them, I noticed one of them was definitely a Thule salmon, which for those of you out there who don't know what a Thule salmon is, it's a salmon that comes back to the lower Columbia in Oregon and Washington and spawns in some of the tributaries, and typically, a lot of the time, their meat is not the same quality as, say, what we call an upriver bright, or a fish that's gonna swim way up, hundreds of miles up the river and spawn. They come in with more fat, their meat is a lot more red, but these tulies always get a really bad rap and we urge people to let them go. Obviously you guys saw us just out there fishing and when we caught those fish, really there's definitive ways of telling something is a tulie, but those fish that we caught, I, we could all comment below of whether you thought it was gonna be a tulie. I didn't think it was gonna be at all, but one of them obviously, as you can see, cut white. One of them obviously cut blood red like you would normally see a salmon. So these are both Chinook salmon, both just from different areas of the world, really, different areas of the continental United States. So, what I'm gonna do is our first ever Kanigi's Kitchen Thule vs. Upriver Bright cook-off. So what I'm gonna do is a very basic recipe for both of them. I'm gonna get these things lathered up with a little bit of seasoning, some butter, and then we're gonna head out. I got the grill warmed up. We're gonna throw these bad boys on the grill, and then right here in front of you guys and everybody in the world, we're gonna try each one and see what one we think is tastier. I've eaten these tulies before in my life, and I think everybody else out there probably has, but they get a bad rap for their lack of flavor. But what I notice a lot of the time, one, the meat is just as firm. What makes gross salmon to a lot of people is if the meat's very soft, you can push your fingers through it, it's very squishy and nasty, and it has kind of a pungent smell of Chinook. But I have a lot of times eaten these tulies and noticed that there really is no difference at all in the taste of that meat. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of butter to each of those little those little uh, slices that I just made here. I like to do that so that butter can soak into that meat. Just gonna do nice little pieces in each one of those little slits that I made. There we go. And I'm gonna make sure to try to keep the amount of butter, the amount of seasoning, the amount of everything very equal on each one of these pieces of fish so that we're really not getting much of a variable in between the two. We're gonna taste the same flavor of seasoning. We're gonna taste, hopefully, the same flavor of fish. And we're gonna knock this out of the park, the stigma that these tulies are gross and these upriver brights are the only thing in the world worth eating. So I'll stick that in there just like that. Stick that in there just like that. And that butter is gonna just add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of fatty taste to it. I'm gonna take just some Johnny seasoning, just a nice little coating of that. Give it a little flavor, just like so. A Little bit of Basically all this stuff is pepper, salt, granulated garlic, and some paprika in it. So again, just a nice, nice little hint of flavor. Just give us a little bit of, little bit of a different taste. It'll just give us a little bit of a, a zang to it, maybe a zing. We'll see how it comes out. I'd say that's pretty even here. But I'm trying not to cover up the taste of the fish at all here so that we can really kind of decipher which one we think is better. So I'm gonna go just a small, Tiny little bit of pepper on here. And it's pretty crazy as you guys are seeing and you can probably tell, comment below with which one you think is gonna taste better. I know in parts of the world, like parts of Alaska and stuff, when they catch these, what they call ivory kings, it's like a really big deal. People are excited, they're excited to have them. But around here in the Northwest, people hate on them and they don't like to eat them. So I'm really excited to see how these turn out. Let's take these out to the grill and get them cooking. Okay, we're out back, we got the grill good and hot. We're gonna throw these bad boys on there and give them about 15 to 20 minutes uncovered. Made my little aluminum foil pan, as you guys have seen me do before. We're gonna slap that lid on here. And now the only thing to do is wait. All right, everybody, I hear the sizzling. I smell the fishy. Let's get this thing off the grill. Look at that. Perfectly done, looks nice and flaky. Smells absolutely amazing. And I'm super excited to see which one comes out on top here. Let's get this thing off the grill. And onto our pan. Let's go stick a fork in her. Okay, well first observation here, obviously one is a lot different color. 
They're both done perfectly, just about the same. You guys can see already, just, I, I chose a shoulder piece of both of these fish, which usually have a little bit more fat. And you can kind of tell already with the same amount of cook time, this redder fish with, le with you know, that nicer color. So you can tell right off the bat that this fish, almost just, you know, by the naked eye, is a little bit drier. And I'm guessing because it has a little less fat in it, which is odd because this fish is going further, this fish is sticking around in the lower river. So we're gonna go Thule first, right out of the gate. So first reaction, one, it's good and juicy. I don't really taste any difference from the Thule to what I would, in my mind, think a normal salmon tastes like. A lot of people eat these things and are just as happy to be eating them as any kind of salmon, but that's pretty darn good. Honestly, I'm gonna go for a second bite, try a little bit more. Honestly, I think it's pretty great. Very basic flavoring that I added to this fish, but it's not bad. It tastes good, it tastes like good fish. It's nice and juicy, has a lot of fat in it, and I actually think it's pretty, pretty damn good. So, second, second fish here. Going for that more red, more classic upriver bright Chinook. Pull that bone out there. And let's see how she tastes. Completely different flavor, I must say. The taste between this one and this one is hands down different. This one almost has a more rich flavor to it. It doesn't have just that fishy kind of salmon taste. And I must say, maybe all you people out there aren't wrong. A true upriver bright, nice red meated salmon does taste way better than this Thule. A lot of people will smoke these, but the grill comparison, exact same recipe, same cook time, same everything. This redder, more typical salmon, the Upriver Bright tastes way, way better than the Thule. So let it be said, that's just my opinion. Some of you out there might love Thule's, not gonna discriminate against you guys, but definitely like that red Upriver Bright a lot more than the Chinook. So there we have it. The first ever addicted Thule versus Upper River Bright taste test. All right, everybody. So as we sit here and enjoy our little dinner, I want us to just kind of reminisce and thank all of you for being along for this crazy Ring of Fire adventure that we've been on. We probably put on over a thousand miles, went across the entire state of Oregon and Washington, fished with some awesome people. Want to throw a huge thank you out to everybody we fished with, Alex, Steve, my buddy Kale, Eric, for coming out and helping us be successful out on the big river here. But most of all, I want to say again, I said it in the first episode, our thoughts and prayers are out there with all you people who lost their homes, who lost their livelihoods, who lost everything they had to these dangerous and crazy wildfires. So our love goes out to you as fishing addicts or just as fellow humans. So again, you guys, thank you so much for joining along with this adventure. Be sure to comment below with what you thought of this whole series and whether or not we should keep doing these awesome adventures across state lines and all the way into the depths of every sort of fishery that there is. If you guys haven't seen all the videos in this series, we were out here for four days, go up here, hit this link to the other video, check the rest of them out, go down, hit subscribe as always, hit that little bell notification, give us a thumbs up and drop a comment below and you could be the comment of the day just like this one right here. You guys, thank you so much for coming out with us on this adventure. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.